Hi, in this video we are going to talk about the SCS dimensionless unit hydrograph. In the previous video we spoke about synthetic unit hydrographs, what they are and why we need them and what information we need for synthetic unit hydrographs. So SCS dimensionless unit hydrograph is one of the synthetic unit hydrographs that is commonly used and we have used this in all our HMS labs. Um, so let's see what a SCS dimensionless unit hydrograph is. So SCS, as you know, stands for Soil Conservation Service at that time, and now it is called NRCS, which is the Nat National Resources Conservation Service. So this is what a SCS dimensionless unit hydrograph is. And if you read the text here, so this SCS dimensionless unit hydrograph was created by an uh, individual named Victor Marcus. So we all know how to derive unit hydrograph by this time. So what Victor did was he created lots of unit hydrographs for some midwestern watersheds and what he did was he averaged all of them and then he made the unit hydrograph dimensionless. So the way he made the unit hydrograph dimensionless was he divided the y-axis or all the q's by the peak value q peak and then he divided the x-axis by the time to peak and this is what you see here okay so that's why on y-axis the Q peak or the peak has a value of 1 and the time to peak is also 1 because the x axis is divided by the time to peak and y axis is divided by Q to peak and you can say the base time here is phi TP okay so phi times time to peak so actually in literature there is not much information available on what watersheds were used, their locations and their and how many watersheds were used and so on. So one key thing to again look at this is these were small watersheds um, but these days the unit hydrograph including the SCS dimensionless unit hydrograph is used in all sorts of watersheds not just agriculture and all different sizes. So the figure that you see here came from this USDA report and I will provide a link to this on my website if you want to read about that in more detail. So this is a SCS dimensionless unit hydrograph. In order to use this method, we have to actually create a unit hydrograph by using this SCS dimensionless unit hydrograph. The question is how do we convert this dimensionless unit hydrograph into a unit hydrograph that can be used. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, in the previous slide you saw just the curve, this curve and all the values along the, that those curves. So this is Q over QP, T over TP. So all the values that you see on in this table are are used in creating that curve so when you want to use this method you just don't need the curve you actually need the values and again this is something that is standard and it is published in in the SCS report and many other books you, you will find this so the idea again here is you start with this dimensionless table and you make it dim make it dimensional by multiplying this column by QP and this column by TP. Okay, so once you multiply column 1 and column 2 by TP and QP respectively, you end up with a unit hydrograph that you need. In the third column is the mass curve, which is just basically cumulative value of all the discharge ratios that you see in column 2 and you can see it becomes 1 after accumulating all those values. So this is the 
again just the same plot that we saw earlier so in red is the actual SCS unit hydrograph I'm just tracing the that hydrograph here the dimensionless unit hydrograph and let me change the color here if I can So the blue color is the mass curve that we saw in the previous table. And what you see here that in hatch, so that's, you can think it's a rainfall pulse. So the time between the peak of the hydrograph and the midpoint of the rainfall hydrograph is the lag time. So we have already seen that. And then, so TP and then the base time is 5 times TP. So what SCS also did was you can think of this as a triangle. So you can make an approximation that we instead of using the curvilinear unit hydrograph that you see here in red, you can actually approximate that with a triangle. So let me use a different color for that triangle. So for triangle, we are going to use, let's say, yellow color. So that's, we can approximate the curvilinear unit hydrograph with this triangle. Okay. So the idea behind that is that you can actually, it's easy to construct this triangle and in the next slide we are going to see that we can equate the area of this triangle which will give you the volume to 1 and that will help us get an expression for time to peak and the Q peak. Okay. The other thing that you also see in this slide is TC, so that's time of concentration or time, yeah, time of concentration. And in our previous video, we learned what time of concentration is. You will also see that at the time of concentration, there is point of inflection. So the idea here again is that when you reach the time of concentration, all the surface runoff has reached the watershed outlet and that's when the base flow contribution will start, okay? So, so this is time to base of this triangle and so in the next slide, we are going to use the triangular approximation to come up an expression for QP and TP and then we will see how that expression can be used to rescale the dimensionless unit hydrograph, okay? So this is that triangular approximation. We have QP here, we have time to peak, and the base time, if you go to the previous slide, is approximately that, that base time is 2.67 time, times the time to peak. Okay, so what I have done here is I have equated the area of the triangle to one inch and if you solve that using this, so 2.67 times TP, so TP is in hours, so I convert that into seconds because our QP is in CFS and then one inch I convert that into <clears throat> into volume by multiplying it by area and then this is the conversion from mile to feet okay so if you solve all that you end up with this expression okay so the idea here is if you know the area of the watershed if you know the time to peak you can find out q peak and once you know what q peak is you can rescale the x the y-axis on the dimensionless unit hydrograph curve to get the actual values for that. So we know how to get the watershed area. Uh, 
if once you delineate the watershed boundary there are multiple ways by which you can calculate area if you are using GIS that's even much easier and if you are using some manual method again there are ways to calculate the watershed area so we know how to get the watershed area the next question is how do we get the time to peak okay and in literature and many of the software that you will use this number here is called PRF and PRF stands for peak ratio factor as I said the SCS dimensionless unit hydrograph was derived on certain specific watersheds in the US Midwest and they don't actually work as well in many other watersheds so what people have done is they have used a different conversion factor here which is the PRF to fit the the unit hydrograph for their study areas okay so coming back to this expression we have an expression for time the peak flow our next goal is how do we get the time to peak we know how to get the area so the expression that I have derived here uses the US units which means we assumed a rainfall of one inch our Q peak is in CFS so instead of US units which is what this is if you use SI units you end up with this expression so in this case the watershed area is in kilometer square and Q peak is in meter cube per second and if you want to go back and and derive this the rainfall is in one centimeter okay so so this is the expression in US units this is the expression in SI units so again we don't know how to get the time to peak so to get the time to peak let's see what we need um, so again this is the rainfall duration so TR is rainfall duration okay so lag again is the time between the discharge peak and the midpoint of the rainfall hydrograph so if we know lag time we can find time to peak so time to peak will be the half of this rainfall duration <coughs> plus the lag okay so 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 tr this is tr divided by 2 plus lag will give us time to peak and the expression for time to lag is again this is approximate approximately time to lag is 0 0.6 times tc as you see here then the question is okay so we have an expression for time to peak how do we get time of concentration because in order to use this you need to know what the lag time is and the expression for lag time uses time to concentration and to get the time to concentration there are again several empirical equations available the one that I prefer to use is what you see on the screen so the expression for time to concentration involves the maximum flow length so this goes back to the definition of time of concentration so time of concentration is the time it takes for the water to travel from the farthest point in the watershed to the outlet so the L that you see here is this maximum flow length from the farthest point in the watershed to the watershed outlet y is the average watershed slope so we discussed what this what average watershed slope is and how to get that in the previous video again if you are using GIS and if you have a digital elevation model getting watershed area average slope all that is very easy s is the maximum potential retention in inch so this s is same as the s that we have used in the SCS curve number method and the expression for that is this so in order to get s you need to know what curve number is and to get curve number you need to know land use and soil okay so this is the expression for tc once you know what tc is then time to lag 
is 0 0.6 times Tc and once you know time to lag Tp is Tr divided by 2 plus T lag and Tr divided by 2 that's the duration of rainfall so once you know the duration of rainfall and the time of concentration you can get time to peak once you know what time to peak is once you know what Q peak is then you can dimensionalize that dimensionless unit hydrograph and you end up with a unit hydrograph for your watershed. So let's talk about the steps and the information you need in steps in using SCS dimensionless unit hydrograph. So the first thing you need to know is the area of the watershed. Okay, so once you know the area, you also need to know what the time to concentration is. And in order to know what the time to concentration is, you need to know the maximum flow length. You need to know the watershed slope. you need to know the curve number and to know what the curve number is you need to know what the land use and soil hydrologic group is okay and once you know the curve number you get the s parameter which goes into time of concentration you also need to know rainfall duration TR. So once you know rainfall duration, then you can calculate T lag or TP, which is TR divided by 2 plus TC. Okay, or not TC, 0 0.6 times TC, which is the lag time. And once you know time to peak, and once you know what watershed area is then you find out what QP is so QP is that PRF factor times area divided by TP okay once you know QP once you know TP then you can go back and rescale that dimensionless unit hydrograph which is this and when I say you can um, make this hydrograph dimensional, all I'm saying is multiply the y-axis by QP, multiply the x-axis by TP, and then we have the values for doing that. So you basically multiply the, the first column by TP, the second column by QP, and you get the, the unit hydrograph that you need. So this is how you can use the SCS dimensionless unit hydrograph and in the next video we will do a small assignment on how this is done. Okay, so this is uh, it and I will see you soon in my next video. Thank you very much. Bye.